The tamal is a traditional Mesoamerican dish that is made of masa, a starchy dough, usually corn-based, that is then wrapped and steamed in a corn husk or banana leaf. The tamal can be filled with anything you desire, from meats, cheeses, veggies, fruits, and even chilies. Tamal is derived from the word tamali, from the Nahuatl language spoken by the Aztecs. The word means wrapped food. They originated in Mesoamerica as early as 8,000 to 5,000 BC, where the Aztecs and Mayan civilization used tamales as portable food, often to support their armies, but also for hunters and travelers. Tamales have always been loved by all Hispanics, but since the 1900s, they have become popular amongst all cultures. They're right up there with sushi and dim sum. Tamales are used for special occasions, like New Year's, the Day of the Dead, and Christmas. Today we're going to visit Mexico, Colombia, Nicaragua, and Cuba. Let's have some tamales. In Mexico, tamales begin with a dough made from corn called masa. They are then wrapped in corn husks or banana leaves before cooking, depending on the region they're from. They are then steamed until firm, and they're filled with a savory or sweet filling. Few countries have such an extensive variety of tamales as Mexico, where they're considered one of the most beloved traditional foods in the country. Almost every state and region in Mexico has its own kind of tamal. It is said that there are between 500 to 1,000 different types of tamales all over the country. The annual consumption of tamales, experts estimate hundreds of millions a year. Tamales became one of the representatives of Mexican culinary tradition in Europe, being one of the first samples of culture the Spanish conquistadores brought back to Spain as proof of civilization. Now tamales are used on special occasions, like Christmas Day, the Day of the Dead, and Mexican Independence Day. Today we're at Magali's to try some authentic Mexican tamales. Hey Magali, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Who is everyone here in the kitchen? Well, today we've got Dorina and we have Lorena. Okay, well I am so excited to be here. Nice to meet you guys. We want to know, or I want to know, the process of how to make a tamal. Well, okay. let me tell you. First we start by making our masa. Our masa consists of corn, uh, lime, and water. We bring that to a boil. We put it through the grinder. We grind it and that gives us our mix, which is our masa. And to this masa, of course, we add different ingredients. And that's what makes our masa and sets our masa apart. What's, for many what, what is it that's different from other? Well, first of all, we don't use lard. We don't use that's lard great. in our tamales, yeah. So we try to always go with um, a healthier alternative. We know that a lot of people are um, vegan. vegan and they're allergic to a lot of things. So Good. we don't use lard in our masa. Second of all, our corn that we purchase is uh, non-GMO corn. So that is another big thing because we know a lot of people um, are looking always for a healthier alternative. That's amazing. So, um, and then into our masa, we put a few of our secret ingredients. And, um, but we use, there's, uh, there's actually no flour in it either. So they're gluten free. Oh my so gosh. So anybody can, that has an allergy I was going to ask if they're vegan tamales, but well, you they're gluten already... free. Now, of course, the vegan tamales, we do make a vegan tamal, which is our vegetable um, tamal. And then we make our vegetarian options, which is our chili and cheese. Yeah. And the pineapple one is also considered a um, vegetarian option because there is no lard, there is no animal product, and there is no dairy in wow. it as well. So, um, and so yeah, so we make different types of tamales here. So why does it take so long to make the masa? Well, it it's a very so labor intensive um, process of tamales. It's not just a matter of, you know, you just get something and you put it together. I mean, it starts with cooking the corn then we have to grind it, then we've got to make our actual masa. And then prior to that, you've got to remember, we have to cook all of our meats. So we make um, eight different flavors. We make chicken, pork, beef, cheese, wow. sweet corn, pineapple, vegetable, and a ground beef and jalapeno. And what's the most popular one? The most popular would be a chicken. The chicken. Yeah, so chicken, this one right here. Chicken right here is one of the most popular, and our sweet corn. And That's what do you guys definitely. have in the chicken? Is it just shredded beef? It's shredded chicken with uh, green tomatillo sauce. And is, oh, so this is the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce right there. And so have you always been eating tamales your whole life? Yeah, we grew up eating tamales during Christmas, during special occasions. That was one of the most and important things. And this is, Magali's is your restaurant. You yes. decided to make tamales. Yes. So, so you love tamales. I love tamales. My kids love tamales. So Everybody loves tamales. Everybody loves tamales. So that's it. You put the masa, then yes. you put the chicken, and you put the sauce, yes. and then you fold it in the and corn. You fold it. And what mm -hmm. region is this tamale from? This is from Jalisco, Mexico. Jalisco, Mexico. Yes. That's where you're from. Yes, that's from where my parents are from. Jalisco and Zacatecas. And do you guys have this on a daily basis or just special occasions? No, we do tamales. For, do we eat them, you mean, or do we uh, make yeah. them? No, make well, we eat them all the time. Now, especially being that we produce them, this is something that 
We have, our kids have them for lunch, they have them for breakfast, we have them for dinner. So yeah, it's a constant thing. And how many tamales do you make per day? We make right now in our slow season, we make about 1,200. You know, and a day, a day, yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we make about twelve hundred. That's crazy. And then during Christmas, we make five, six, seven thousand. So it just depends on the day and how much work we've got to, you know, how many orders we've got to fill. That is incredible. Yeah. So then after this, you guys put it in a, the oven, or where do you guys? Put no, it? we put them into pots, and we have the pots that are right here. This is where Juan's gonna come in. Juan. Juan. How about you put up, uh, line them up for us? It's very important when we're lining the tamales up. They've got to all stand up and they've got to be nicely, nice and tight. If you don't put them in nicely, nice and tight, the tamales, as they're cooking, because they start to expand, mm -hmm. they will actually fall apart or they'll oh, open wow. up. It looks really simple, but believe it or not, no, even no. to stand them up, yeah. it's a trick. Because if you don't stand them up correctly, they start falling apart, they start tilting over. So Juan's got plenty years of experience. And the corn husks have no, no sauces or anything around it, it's just the corn husks. Yeah, it's just the corn husks, that's all it is. We get, like I said, the corn, take it right off of the cob. Now this is what gets it into it. So now, meat. once the, the pot is full, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to our stock pot where we've got the bottom part of this pot, which is full of water, and that water is what's gonna steam our tamales. <gasps> so you can see we've got water in this pot already, ready wow. to go. Oh, so it just sits on top We just sit it right on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a time, the time that we actually saw, set this pot down. So as you can see, these pots here already have, it's got the kind of tamal that is sitting inside of it and the time that we set it on the um, oh, stove. Already done right. And so how long does it take to steam? An on? hour and a half. So an after an hour and a half, whoa, are these These are cooked? already done and ready to go. This is already the cooked ones. These are, for example, carne molida, which is our ground beef and that jalapeno. So good. Yeah. I'm so excited right now to try these tamales. I brought you one of our specialties here. Oh. This is a plate that I actually created, and I figured, you know what? People go over into um, all these different places and they have bowls. I said, well, amazing. why not have a tamale bowl? We have a chicken bowl, a carne asada bowl. I said, why not a tamale bowl? So that's one of my creations, so I hope you enjoy it. This looks incredible. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Enjoy. I Let don't even know, know where to think. start. Okay, and that's some, some sauce to go with it. So you put the salsa before? Yeah. And just enjoy it. Now that is mouth-watering delicious. Well, awesome. I'm oh my happy God. that you like it. The masa is so soft. Yeah. And just melt in your mouth, and then I like the contrast with the lettuce. It's yeah. like crunchy. It's crunchy. It's like yeah. refreshing. Yep. And so this way, it's like when you're in the mood. You know, tamales is a comfort food. Oh my gosh. So because it is a comfort food, um, you know, a lot of people like to eat it during the winter. But now you can actually eat it also during the summer with some lettuce, a better lettuce, some rice, some beans. You've got it all in one. You mm -hmm. one of the best tamales. Of, I mean, maybe the best tamale I've had in my life. Oh, good. I'm happy you enjoyed it. Magalis, don't forget it. You're gonna want to try this because. If not, I'm gonna eat them all. <laughs> <laughs>
Then I saute some rock shrimp. So you're making the masa right now? No, actually the masa is prepared already. already. Okay. Yeah, the, the, this is just to finish the tamal. Okay, perfect. And what's the biggest difference for Cubanos and Mexican tamales? What is the biggest difference? Uh, for the Mexican tamales, we use uh, just plain plain masa, plain, plain corn. Okay, and this and one this has one everything? Has, uh, yes. This one, this one has uh, shrimp, has shallots, has the, sh the shrimp. So it has a flavor yes. in the, the masa, which the sounds flavor. delicious. Uh -huh. And how long have you been at the? Have you loved in tamales your whole life? Yes. It's always been a tradition in it's your family. It's been traditional. Yes, it's yes. been a tradition. For when? For special holidays? For uh, special, mostly special holidays. For uh, even for Thanksgiving here, we use tamales. Even tamales. Thanksgiving? Yes, even for Thanksgiving. Yes. So I saute some shrimp oh my with that the. That looks delicious. With the, with the shrimp, then I mix it with the lobster sauce. With the lobster sauce. And this doesn't take, so other tamales take like two hours to cook. This, is this right away? The, actually, the, to cook this one, it takes about an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. Depends okay. how, uh, how uh, hot is the oven. Okay. It's a, a cook in the oven, not, not the Oh, not, not the a top. steamer. Uh-huh. So that's, uh, let me get some, some chefs, I'm so sorry, I'm behind you. So I get some, some color to the, to the sauce. What does that add to the sauce? Chives. Chives okay. and some tomato. It looks amazing. So this is the... So that is the sauce? Yes. So it adds the creamy base? Creamy base. So is the ma is the masa, you know, the Mexican masa is really like thick and, it's thick. and yes. hard. Is uh -huh. so is this, this is softer. Softer. This is, is, uh, this is softer. And then I come to Oliver in the steamer. Wow, so you guys use corn husks? Yes. For the uh huh. Then I, I put in the. So sorry. So I, I open the tamal. See? Oh, oh yes. yes. And then so the, the, the masa has shrimp in it right now as well? Yes. This is how I serve it. So I, I tie the. Then. Oh. And then I just. Oh my gosh, I am so. Put the sauce on top. <gasps> that looks incredible. Shrimp. And then I garnish it with uh, some fresh water cress. Fresh water. Uh huh. There you go. Wow, Francisco. That's our presentation for the tamal. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Oh, you're very welcome. Try it. You can try it. Absolutely. Okay. Oh my gosh. I've never tried a Cuban tamal, but this is so rich, so flavorful. It tastes like a lobster risotto in a tamal. And I can't completely describe it because I've never had it, but everybody needs to come back and try this. This is amazing. Francisco, thank you so much. You're very welcome. I appreciate welcome. it. And it was so simple to make. It's very simple, but... But it <laughs> tastes so intricately made. So it's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nicaragua has large form tamales known as naca tamales and their masa is made of non-sweet corn or in the U.S. it's called feed corn. The most popular tamales are tamales de gallina or chicken, tamales dulces or sweet and tamales en elote, corn on the cob. They also have a tamale called Tamale Colorado, which is filled with chicken and pork and has a tomato-based sauce, hence the name Colorado, which means red colored in Spanish. This also may contain olives, peppers, almonds, and raisins. We made it to La 27. Let's see what it takes to make a nata tamal. Hola, Maria. Hola, Ivana. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Bueno, pues, eso se ve delicioso. ¿Qué ingredientes usas para hacer un nata tamal? OK, para hacer un nata tamal, primero usamos masa. Mm -hmm. Usamos chancho. 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 Es? La palabra típico nicaragüense es chancho. Eso es puerco. carne. Puerco. Carne de puerco. Uh -huh. Carne de puerco. Usamos uh, tomate, chiltoma, cebolla, mm. pasas, aceituna, chiles. Por último lleva el arroz. ¿Está cocinado el arroz? No, eso va crudo. 
¿Qué hace estos tamales tan especiales? La diferencia es que en Acatamal a los tamales es uh, que lleva bastantes ingredientes, uh -huh. que da mucho más sabor al sí. Acatamal. Uh -huh. sí. Bueno, pues empecemos. Ok, Tenemos. voy a poner esto. Esta es la masa. Esta es la masa. Suave. Agregamos aceitunas. Olives. Agregamos papa. Agregamos. ¿Y esto está crudo? Esto va crudo, totalmente crudo. ¿Ok? What? Agregamos. This is crazy. Chiltoma. Cebolla. ¿Ok? Agregamos tomate. Es un volcano de ingredientes. Ya, agregamos. Pasas. Sorry. Agregamos los chiles. Un puño y de arroz. arroz. Okay. Por último, la menta, el peso, hierba buena, menta. Y aquí y no tenemos lo... en la catamal. Y lo dejen. Eso es. Eso es en la catamal. Y se cocina entero así. Sí. ¿Qué? Después agarramos. Wow. Su envoltura. ¿Y quién es tu favorito nacatamal? ¿Cuál tipo es? Nicaragüense, muy rico. Uh -huh. Tenemos un nacatamal. ¿Cuántos tamales cocinan al día acá? Aproximadamente unos 200 nacatamales al día. Okay. Uh -huh. Este es el final, el cual se pone dos horas a cocinar y listo. Y después... Después Uy. aquí tenemos una catamal cocinado. ¿Y cómo se, se abre? Se con... abre con unas tijeras. Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. ¿Qué haces? Se abre de esta forma en el plato. Oh, este sí es muy diferente de mexicanos. ¿no? Totalmente diferente. No tiene salsa, pero está muy mojado y aguado. Sí, eh, puede probar. Bueno, here we go. I don't even know where to start. Mm. That is delicious. The masa is so soft that it melts in your mouth and it gives you the ability to taste the meat and the onions and the peppers, which gives it a little spicy taste and it's just, just the right hint of spice. And the meat, the big chunks of meat are delicious because I love meat. <laughs> mm. And it's so warm and the consistency is so soft, but also chunky. It is delicious. This is something that I have to come back and try the whole thing because it is delicious. Maria, muchas gracias por esto. This is okay. delicioso. Y voy a traer todas mis amigas acá okay. porque mi primera vez estando en Nicaraguan food y es perfecto. Okay, bienvenida. Muchas gracias, gracias Maria. Gracias. Everybody needs to come and check it out. La 27 for the best nacatamales you'll ever have. In Colombia, they're wrapped in plantain leaves. There are several types, but the most widely known are tolimenses and boyacenses. Like other South American varieties, the most common are very large, way bigger than the Mexican tamales. The dough is the size of a softball, and it's wetter, softer, and has a bright yellow color to it. A tamal tolimense is usually served with hot chocolate, and it may contain large cooked carrots, whole corn kernels, vegetables, rice, chicken with the bone, and chunks of pork. A related food is the envuelto, which is made out of yuca flour and resembles the Mexican tamal, but it has little to no filling. Today, we're at Sabor Colombiano, and I can't wait to show you how Colombia does tamales. Estoy acá con Rosario, la dueña de Sabor Colombiano, y me vas a enseñar cómo hacer un tamal colombiano, ¿sí? Claro, con mucho gusto. El tamal tolimense, a diferencia de los otros, es a base de arroz. Entonces, la base del mm. tamal es el arroz. ¿Y por, ti, ¿Por qué tiene el arroz ese color tan amarillo? El, con, el condimento que se le coloca, y el tolimense es el que tiene arroz, no el boyesense. Exacto, eh, eh, ni, ni el del valle, ni el paisa, ellos son de masa de maíz, sí. este de arroz. Le colocamos costilla de cerdo. ¿Y eso ya está cocinado? Está precocido. Está precocinado. Sí. Y pollo. Ok. 
Okay. Y este no está cocinado. Este no. Es indispensable una buena salsa. ¿Y qué tiene esa salsa? Esta salsa tiene tomate, cebolla, pimentón, ajo. Ah, eh, condimentos para... Como pollo para sudado. Sí, exactamente. El tamal tolimense lo llevamos así. Y este es el que viene en moñito ah, así. Sí. De aquí lo amarramos. ¿Con esto? Eso. Yo te lo amarro. Si quieres ponlo doble para que no vayas a sufrir ah, bueno. ahora al cocinarse. ¿Y hace cuánto tiempo haces esos, esos, esos tamales? Bueno, nosotros abrimos el restaurante hace seis, bueno, el 22 de diciembre exactamente, cumplimos seis años. Seis y, años. Y aquí hacemos tamales siempre para deleitar nuestra clientela. ¿Y quién te enseñó a hacer un tamal? Y bueno, en Colombia vi cómo los preparaba y entonces y los de allá. De aquí va a la olla, lleva una cocción por tiempo de tres horas. Tres Entonces, horas. En ese tiempo se, se cocina el pollo, se acaba de cocinar el puerco, la costilla y todo lo demás. Ese es el tiempo de cocción. Aquí tiene un tamal tolimense. Un tamal tolimense. ¿Y cuántos de estos haces por día? Ellos se hacen más o menos unos... Eh, no, hacemos una vez a la semana. Se hacen 100 para la semana. Y esto es para mí. Y eso es para ti. Lo vamos a tratar. The influence of the tamal has expanded beyond the Hispanic community and is loved by all cultures. So next time you have a tamal, I hope you appreciate not only the time and effort, but the history and culture behind it. My tamal has still two hours until it's ready, but I hope you enjoyed your time here and we'll see you again here in Infusión.